Hey guys, this is Crystal with Coughing Up Stitches again. Today is our border day for all these um, dishcloths we've made. This was the single crochet dishcloth. I have already went around one, two, three of these edges, and I'm going to do the last one with you. I've done that with the other ones as well, just so this would be a quick, easy tutorial. Sorry about that. My son's been in my room and I've got some empty bottles I gotta get out of here, but I was trying to get this done pretty quick so I didn't have time to clean up. But this was the uh, single crochet. So I'm just gonna back out here so I can show you how to do this one corner here. So when you come up to a corner, you're pretty much gonna see that it's a corner. There's a pretty big hole right there. You can see my finger through this. Um, you're just going to go in because I'm doing a single crochet border. So you're just going to go in, pull up, you have two loops, and you do a regular single crochet. Okay, and then what you're going to do is go back into that same stitch there that you just went into, and you're going to do the same thing again. Some people use two, some people use three. I only used two on this because this yarn is pretty thick. So on this end though, because I want to hang this one up because it is one of my scrubby ones. So I won't be using it quite as often as the others. So I wanna hang it up, have a little hanger on it. I'm gonna go ahead and chain seven chains. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna go back down into this chain, this uh, single crochet, and I'm actually going to slip stitch in there. So then you have a nice little hook there, little little thing to hang on a hook or hang on a push pin or whatever you want to hang it on if you prefer those. I'm going to hang this one up just because, like I said, it is for my pots and pans, so it's not going to be used as often. It may never be used because I just really like the color. So after you do that, this is one of my ends. Um, you can either weave them in with a um, yarn needle or you can weave it in as you go. I'm gonna weave mine in as you go. And how you do that is you take this and you lay it down with the yarn um, on top that you're gonna be crocheting over. So with this, because the yarn, the edges are kind of bumpy, I just kind of try and find like a pretty close hole to kind of pop my hook into and get it going down the side. And then you'll kind of pretty much just be able to feel where that hook needs to go next time. Now I will say, this, if this is your first time crocheting and you've never made a dishcloth or you've never um, done like a single crochet, I honestly would not suggest this yarn because it is very thick and very stiff and kind of hard to work with. And you kind of just gotta plunk your hook you know, wherever it will go. There's there's no rhyme or reason with this one because it's just so thick. It's kind of hard to be like, oh, well, this is where my hook goes. It's a little bit harder than the others that i um, done the tutorials with to try and find where this yarn goes. You wouldn't necessarily, if you use this yarn, and I will keep this in mind for myself next time, I'll probably not even do a border on it because it's it's just cumbersome to do with this yarn because it's so thick and it's so heavy and stiff that it's not anything I'm real excited about getting back to again. Can't even hardly get that hook in there there. A little tough. But definitely, you know, if you need a good scrubber for pots and pans and, and you want it to be more eco-friendly or whatever, not have to use those little scrub pads and stuff, 
with the chemicals and everything on it in it um, this would definitely be a better alternative for that fact if you're eco-friendly um, there's actually yarn out there that's more eco-friendly um, than than even the yarn that you can go to your local Walmart Hobby Lobby Michaels or anything and buy if you look it up I'm sure, I think I seen some on Etsy at one point in time that was a little bit more friendly. Or even if you could go to your, and uh, learn how to spin. Okay, so here where I've done worked this single crochet, I'm only gonna have one single crochet to have to put in this corner right here because I've done worked the one. So when you do come back around, you already have one in that beginning. Um, unless you decide to like start in the middle somewhere, then you wouldn't. So when you get done and you come to the end, and you can always, if you wanted to not add this, you could just keep going and do another round or two if you want it to be um, a little bit wider. If you've done say 15, uh, 15 chains and then done 15 rows up or 20 rows up or whatever, and you felt like, oh, it's not thick enough or wide enough. You can always do more, more um, bordering on it if you wanted to. There's no, right, there's no rule that says, oh, you can only do one row of borders. I've seen plenty of blankets that will have a single crochet, and then they'll go back and they'll chain three, and then they'll go and they'll have, or they'll have a, a shell stitch, and then they'll go back on top of the shell stitch, and then do a pico stitch, which is actually really pretty. It's just all up to you. Now, with these edges and stuff, um, this one, you know, I left it hanging out a little bit, but it's already crocheted in there pretty tightly. So, I'm just going to go here and cut that off. And then, you can use your hook, especially with this type of yarn, and just weave in those ends if you want to. Just take them down through a couple of these... Um, stitches underneath here now there is a right side and a wrong side with any project you do with dishcloths i don't really pay attention to that because it's a dishcloth you're going to be doing dishes with it i don't think anybody's going to be looking to see if you put this little bit of yarn that you have through on the right side or wrong side of your project. If they do, then, you know, I I probably wouldn't be letting them watch me do the dishes, <laughs> you know? That's just me, though. I'm, I'm sarcastic in a way, so you'll have to excuse that because it will be coming out on this channel. And I do have yarn needles. I actually just forgot to get them out for doing this video. That's enough weaving. So we're gonna cut that and then that is our purple one with the hanger now the next two i'm not gonna be doing the hanger on just because they're a little bit more flimsy they're not as um, tight or as stiff as this one but you do you would do it the same way when you come to a corner you would single double whatever um border we're gonna do and then you chain seven then come back down and finish that corner out But yeah, so you just got your little little thing and you can hang whatever, hang it wherever, whatever. Like I said, this is our purple one. The next one I'm going to do is our yellow one. Now, with these other two, if you will pause the video for whichever one you're on or you're doing, Go ahead and pause it and do a single crochet all the way around like we did on the purple one. Just because with what I'm showing you, it's just easier if you have that single crochet instead of the rough edge border. This one I've already did that with and I've already done like I did the other one. I've done three sides and we're going to do the fourth one together. This is the simple shell border. It's very simple. You can put it on any blanket any dishcloth anything that is straight really um i wouldn't really put it on anything in the round i mean if you're doing a round granny maybe but this this is kind of like a grain this is the original granny shell 
stitch. It's just in a straight form instead of doing a square. So right here, I've already done one part of the corner and um, which is just three double crochet shells. Now this is the double crochet um, dishcloth that we did that I'm doing and I'm using a J um, 5.75. I did forget to tell you on the purple one with that yarn, I used a K. I don't think it suggested using a K. I think it suggested maybe using a J but I wanted to use a K, but the K is a 6.5 millimeter, and that's what I used on the purple one. I forget to tell you guys what hooks I use all the time. Okay, so on this one, I have already went and done, like I said, three three sides. So I just, I'm gonna do one side with you guys. I've already done one part of this corner. So when you go in and you do the three double crochets that I'm fixing to show you, then you're just gonna chain one, some people like to chain two. I like to keep my corners tight, so I'm only chaining one. So I yarn over, and I go in that corner hole, corner hole, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And I'm going to do that double crochet two more times in the same hole. So we'll yarn over, go through the same stitch, Pull up, you'll have three loops on your hook. Pull a uh, uh, yarn over, pull through two. This yarn's splitting pretty bad. Yarn over and pull through two more. Okay, so then you see this stitch right here. I'm gonna skip over one stitch. So there's be one stitch in between each shell. And you're gonna go into this second one. You're gonna yarn over, go through that stitch, pull up a loop, there's gonna be three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And then you're gonna do that two more times in that same stitch. It's so, it's the simplest um, border, and it's so pretty on blankets, baby blankets. I like using this if I have not such a flashy blanket, maybe just a single crochet, double crochet, anything, maybe something not real flashy, just to kind of show um, a little bit of detail in my work to give it a little bit of oomph because it's really simple and easy. And you can go anywhere from one to two stitches being left in between each shell. But with this being a dish, dish, um, a dish towel or a dish rag, I wanted them to be closer together because I do I, I don't I don't want big old holes you know in my dish rag and not actually getting my pots and pans clean pretty quick for me. So there was another shell completed. We're gonna skip one stitch. We're gonna go in this small one right here, and we're gonna do three more. This is the easiest stitch, the easiest border. Um, I can sit down and watch TV and do it on a big blanket. I also like doing this when um, I do like big granny square blankets, this being the border. It just kind of feels like it brings everything together when I do that. And we will be doing um, a granny square blanket together. Sometimes I may do more of a, if it's a bigger blanket, like the diamond blanket that I've been working on, when I show that to you guys, I'm gonna show you guys just a sample of it because it's so big. I will show you the blanket that I did, but the blanket itself is just so big sometimes that it's easier for me guys just to show you samples of what I'm doing depending on the stitch like that one. Um, so it's just going to be a sample when I show you guys that one, but I'll show you my, my big finished product blanket out of it just so you guys can kind of see, ooh, that's what the whole blanket looks like. Okay, I wanna do that stitch. But it's just such a yarn eater that, and takes so long, and because I was making it for a king size bed, that it is, um, <laughs> it's quite large. So I'll have to show, show it to you guys spread out on um, her bed before, before she um, sleeps under it or, wh or whatnot. So just keep doing this all the way down. I'm running out of yellow yarn. It's okay though. I got a big cone in my in my 
in my cotton yarn stash over there. So I've got I've got a, quite a few cones. My um, grandmother really likes yellow, so she often asks for things in yellow for her kitchen. Her kitchen is yellow walls and white cabinets, and I am trying to talk her into keeping the yellow walls, but painting the cabinets like a gray color because they show everything being white. And whenever um, she had them painted last time, the guys that painted them didn't use cabinet paint, didn't prime the doors. So the paint is coming off. Um, she don't want me painting it right now because we're selling the house. So she's like, why am I gonna put all this money into it and be selling the house? And I said, well, it may help the house sell quicker or better or whatnot. So why not, you know? Oh, wait, I started going into that next one. Okay, so here I kind of got it curved off a little bit because of the way that it, the way that this um, actually is because it's, it is the, um, the way it's done. So I normally don't even care if it turns when it is a dish towel, dish rag. So what I would suggest doing is if that bothers you, I would go ahead and uh, double crochet right here in this corner a couple of times not in that hole in this one right here where there's not anything in it and you can tell it's actually the corner go ahead and just double crochet in there like a couple of times okay just so you can finish that corner off and it not be rounded and then snip your yarn now if you want to do um the loop at this point you are on a crochet you're doing a chain seven and then turn back down and go back in and slip stitch into that now that's another way you can use to divert it so what you're going to do is after you double crochet two in there you're going to take your hook go into that next one and pull it through okay and just tighten it off that way. And it kind of brings all that around together and makes it a nice little point for you. There's nothing wrong in doing that. So there we've got that one done. Um, you can do the same thing. You can use the hook. Some people will use a smaller hook size than what they crocheted with. Some people it don't matter. I'm going to go back with my needle though and just weave it in underneath some of these stitches right here with the shell stitch pattern right there and weave it in on those when I go when I go back in and do it. So there is our purple single crochet border with our hanger. And then we have our yellow double crochet with without the hanger because I'm not gonna do a hanger on this one or my red one. So we've got those two out of the way. And then the next one, we're gonna do a really fun border. It's called the Pico Stitch. And I am using black for this, just plain black. And this one is by Peaches and Cream. Peaches and Cream is not as soft as I Love This Cotton by, yarn, by I Love This Yarn that you get at Hobby Lobby. It is by far not as soft. With that being said, if you are a stickler for your yarn brands matching or you want them to have the same um, texture and feel, then you definitely want to go out and stay with Peaches and Cream or stay with I Love This Cotton. I will say that when I was at Walmart looking at the Peaches and Cream because I did want to stay with the Peaches and Cream, I seen a red, but it wasn't as vibrant of a red. This camera does not do this justice. This is a very vibrant red. This is a blood red, and I'm here for it. I am totally here for it. So with these, with the little Pico stitches, I'm trying to see the little Picos right there. You can see them all the way down through there. That's what we're gonna be doing today on the border of this. This is something that you don't necessarily maybe want to put on a dishcloth unless you're just extra like me. My friends are always like, Crystal, you're so extra. And I'm just like, 
am I extra or are you just basic? So that's <laughs> that's kind of like a running joke um, where I work because they're always like, oh, you're so extra. And I'm just like, am I extra or are you just basic? So if anybody has that same problem, you're more than welcome to use that. But for this one, what I do in my corners, and here I've already crocheted up to the corner here. What I do is I... I'm going to put a single crochet in this corner right here. Okay. That's a double. Do not mind me. My mind is not here right now. <laughs> so we're going to single crochet in this corner. Okay. That's our first single crochet. And then I'm going to single crochet again. Okay. And then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Three. Now, not everybody does their picos this way, but I do. So, I'm going to go see this single crochet right here. I put my hook down in here, and then I go out through the side, okay? So, we're going to go out through the side, and then bring this through, okay? And come through all three loops. Sorry, this... Uh, yarn it's black and i've been holding on to it for like the longest time okay so let's start this again you're gonna go down through that top single crochet out through the side bring it through all three okay so there's your little pico stitch okay and then you're gonna single crochet in the same stitch in the same corner okay and that's all okay then you're gonna go over here to this next stitch right here is the one i'm gonna be using this one right here is so small that it's in that real estate right there has already been taken up so much that i'm skipping to the next one over so i'm gonna go in here and i'm going to single crochet okay now, remember, we done that single crochet right here. So, that's actually going to be the start of our little um, repeat pattern. So, then we're just going to go one, two, three. Down in this top loop right here of this single crochet right here. And then out through the side. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three okay then in the next stitch now this is going to be your repeating pattern for all for all sides okay for the rest of your three sides then in the next stitch you're going to single crochet okay the next stitch you're going to single crochet and chain three one two three Again, you're going to go th down through that top single crochet out through the side. You'll have three loops on your hook, and you're going to pull that yarn through all three. Again, single crochet, single crochet, chain three, go down through that top of the single crochet, out through the side, and then you're going to yarn over and pull it through all three. The Pico stitch is so simple. A lot of people's like, oh, that's going to be so difficult because you got these little knots and everything on there. It's not as difficult as what most people think. I will, I will honestly say the ones that I thought would be the most difficult are the ones that are the easiest just like the spider the cobwebs that i'm doing right now or for this shirt that i'm creating for you guys i thought man i'm not gonna be able to do this stitch it's gonna be like a four row repeater and these guys are not ready for that yet you know but there's also different levels of crocheters out there i'm just trying to take it from beginning to intermediate to advanced um, because I want my channel to grow that way. I want it to be for beginners. I want it to be for everybody. But this cobweb stitch, I mean, it's going to be Halloween before long. And I want y'all to have your fun Halloween shirts. 
Um, I will tell you though, it's more of a mesh style shirt. So you definitely are gonna have to have a shirt underneath it. You could probably tweak it um, any way you needed to, to um, make it to where you like it as far as length and stuff goes. I like my shirts to be longer on me because I, I'm a bigger girl and I've had a child and my body definitely shows it. So I like my shirts to be a little bit longer. If you want it to be more of a crop top, you'll just have to stop it at the point you want to stop it at. Um, I didn't really take any measurements as far as um, lengthwise or widthwise or anything. I just kind of went by looking at it, seeing where it landed on me at. So I didn't really do any um, row counts or anything like that because like I said, it's it's gonna be something that you can make to fit you. It's not one size fits all, although it is a, it's a mesh pattern. Um, it will be stretchy, so it may be a one size fits all, maybe. I mean, you know, it just depends. But definitely if you have any young little teenagers or anything like that, that like to go out on Halloween and look cute, you could put make this for them. I mean, I'm sure that they would be like, oh, I love this. It's it's super like me. It's it's not making me look like a bunny rabbit off the Christmas story, you know? Because <laughs> I think we've all had that <laughs> we've all had that grandma that made us look like the bunny off the Christmas story. Like I I will never forget that. And funny story, my son when he was born. Everybody's like, oh, he looks like the boy off the Christmas story because he had the big blue eyes and all that stuff. And a couple of years ago, you know, everybody was doing the um, the videos where you could put your face on your favorite character or whatever. So, and he, <laughs> he wears glasses now and he had some black rims just like Ralphie in the show. So, we, um, <laughs> we put his face on that TV, on, on that movie, and you couldn't tell the difference between him and Ralphie. It was so, um, very well matched, very well, um, made in there. You couldn't tell the difference. Now, I done a different one with him and the Mad Hatter, um, when Johnny Depp played the Mad Hatter, and you could definitely tell the difference, but the one with him in the Christmas story, if I had had a son when they made that, or even been old enough to have a son they could have definitely used my son as a stunt double they could remake that movie although my son would want to keep his mullet i'm sure <laughs> that's the it's the only thing he's not on part with that mullet so we're here at this corner again so when you go to end it off and you're at the corner you're just going to single crochet into that hole right there and then you're going to single crochet again and then this is where you're going to chain the three so you have a pico in that corner. So you chain the three and then you go down through that top single crochet. This go out through the side, yarn over, bring it, and then bring it through all three. I think I might have actually done a couple of double crochet picos in there because I was busy talking. So excuse those. Don't pay no mind to those. And then you're just on a single crochet back down into that. So you can see that you still have a little hole right there. So what I'm gonna do, and you can do, is take, snip that yarn, go in that hole right there, grab that yarn, pull it through, and just slip stitch it down in there. And that yarn split to high heaven, did it not? Did you see that? So definitely, if you have peaches and cream yarn, do not be like me and just grab it because you're like, oh, I don't see that color enough and then not actually have anything to do because this has taught me that that yarn cannot sit there for very long before you have to use it. So you're gonna slip stitch it in there. You're gonna pull that tight. And then you are going to have, um, weave in your ends and then you're gonna have a beautiful um, if you've done the colors I did, red and black. Now, this, these are a little wonky. So, if you've got one of those foam boards, you can get them at Walmart. Or if you have kids that has the um, 
little puzzle like place together mats you can get four pins wet these you can stretch them out which is probably what i'll do see how it kind of comes in right there you can stretch them out after they're wet to where they're even and let them dry and then that's actually called blocking i will have a video about blocking probably in up within the next month or so when i make an afghan you can do that, or if you don't really care, if it's for you and it's not a gift, then you can just weave those in ends, take them in there, throw them in your dish towel drawer or whatever, and go to town using them. So this is a red, this is a red half double crochet, and then we have the Pico border in black. Then we have a yellow double crochet with the shell border, and then we have the purple one single crochet single crochet border with the little loop there to hang it up now all you have to do on any of those if you want the loop when you come to it can be your last it can be your last set of set of stitches in the corner or it be your first set it can be anywhere it don't have to be your last row like i showed you here i was just trying to make this video a little bit quicker we're at 31 minutes now so i'm sorry you guys but um you just want to um, come to the end, do half of your corner, and then chain seven, come back down into the same hole and pull that through, and then finish your corner out. So, like on this one, where you have your corner, and you're doing two sets of the, of the shell pattern. So, you do your first three into that corner hole, and then right here, instead of chaining one and going into your second three if you chained one i didn't even chain one i just went into my second three to turn that corner because i like it to be tight but you're gonna you would chain seven come back down and then pull a uh, slip stitch that back down in there and then you would go back and do your three double crochets to finish that corner out now on the picos just so you keep them um, in the picos in the corner, I would honestly suggest going back in maybe somewhere right along in here where you've got that little bit of red showing, but I'm going to actually loop that around, um, when I weave mine in and pull that through. But what you could do is go in here and attach your yarn with a slip stitch at that spot, um, to the red and then just chain seven and then come back down and do it again um you know slip stitch that back in there to hook it and everything just so you can keep the look of the picos in the corner so you don't have a big hole in your keep in your picos just so you can keep that looking nice and neat now that's how i would do the pico one it's completely up to you you can do it the way i said about the other two but that would be completely up to you but that is all i have for you guys tonight um i had fun i hope you guys had fun learning all these edges and stuff and these three borders these borders can go on blankets they can go on dishcloths like they, they can go on anything you want anything you can imagine them going on um so hopefully next friday or sunday let's say i'm off next sunday so i'll probably have it up sunday I will be showing you guys the cobweb stitch and how I made it into a shirt. Um, you will see it on me and I'll describe it to you. And then we will do the stitch pattern together, obviously on a different color of yarn. I've been working on this. But I do want to let you guys know if you want a very colorful one, I done mine in bunny tracks. So if you guys have any of the bunny track bunny tracks by Line Brand and you don't know what to do with it, um you can grab it now for me i'm using one i'm probably gonna be using about two and a half skeins to make this shirt but i'm also a bigger girl and i don't want a crop top i want it to be longer so it all really does depend on how long you want it to be how big you want it to be things like that but that's the color i'm going to be using so it's kind of like that very in between a three and a four top yarn weight for me so if you guys want to join me in on that that is the type of yarn i'll be using um for the shirt that i made for me i will be using a four weight um yarn to show you how to do it with just so it shows up a little bit better on camera but you can use any weight yarn you want that you're comfortable working with so until i see you again 
It's never too late to create, and I hope you guys have fun. Bye.